Hey friends, 66 books in 66 days, and today we are in 2 Corinthians, a follow-up letter from 1 Corinthians, which we spoke about last night. You know, Paul had made a visit to Corinth after writing his first letter. Some scholars say that that was true, and then um, his authority was questioned, and so this second letter comes out really to affirm Paul's ministry, defend his authority as an apostle and again refute the false teaching in Corinth. Um, the key verse that comes out of 2 Corinthians is 2 Corinthians 5 verse 20 where he says we are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf be reconciled to God. And he spends a lot of time here about reconciling ministry, the healing power of reconciliation. And so this, um, this letter is really broken out into four parts. Uh, Paul explaining his actions in chapters one and two um, and responding to the attacks on his character uh, and authority. He explains the nature of Christian ministry and, as an example, openly shares about his ministry. Um, so he explains his actions, why he does the things that he does, the power of Christ through that. He defends his ministry in chapters 2 through 7. Uh, and he then he defends, in, 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 in chapters 8 and 9, defends um, the collection, that he's not collecting money. He's never asked for money for himself, but he's collecting money for the poorer churches and the poorer communities. Um, and then uh, chapters 10 through 13, he's defending his authority. And so um, the themes that rise up out of 2 Corinthians is uh, church dip discipline, the idea of sound doctrine, you know, false false teachers were always showing up in the new church. So false teachers uh, who were challenging Paul's authority as an apostle. Paul needed to assert his authority in order to preserve um, the the correct Christian doctrine and and uh, Paul so Paul has to uh, kind of lay out this um, this authority that he had been given because he had met the risen Savior Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus and so he's needing to show this and to prove this uh, to the people so that they could get back to being the church simply to be the church and to uh, know themselves as Christ's ambassadors we are therefore Christ ambassadors. we together the church in unity and so he says be reconciled to God. This is all about our relationship with God through Christ Jesus. And so if you move through these, um, these chapters, you begin to see that, that he's explaining um, practical wisdom uh, that, that, that Paul and the disciples, the apostles, even the people themselves are ministers of the new covenant, uh, which is much better than the old covenant, the, the glory of the new covenant, um, because it is written on our hearts uh, using, using the Old Testament language that, that the uh, old covenant was written on stone. The new covenant is written on the heart of, of those who believe, and therefore we have this, this beautiful new covenant um, that is given to us. In the gift of Jesus Christ, the ministry, the message of salvation in Jesus Christ given to us fragile human beings that are given strength because we trust and we believe in Jesus Christ. Now, chapter 5 talks about the ministry of reconciliation and the importance of reconciling to God. In verse 11, um, it, it, he says, Since then we know what it is to fear the Lord, to have reverence for the Lord. We try to persuade men. This is what we do. What we are is plain to God, and I hope it is plain to your conscience. We are not trying to commend ourselves to you again, but are giving you an opportunity to take pride in us so that you can answer to those who take pride in what is seen rather than what is in the heart. If we are out of our mind, it is for the sake of God. If we are in our right mind, 
it is for you. Well, what does Paul mean by all of this? Um, the study notes in the NIV say, those who take pride in what is seen rather than what is in the heart are false preachers who were concerned only about getting ahead in this world. You know, they were taken on not a vocation, but an occupation uh, as preacher, as teacher, just so they could get a paycheck, right? But we know when something becomes a vocation, it becomes a lifestyle and, and an ability to teach from that lifestyle giving. Um, they were preaching the gospel for money and popularity while Paul and his companions, Paul is saying that, that we are preaching out of concern, true concern, authentic concern for each and every person's eternal hope. And so that's why we have this ministry of reconciliation, reconciling um, our relationship with God. Um, and verse 16 uh, of chapter 5 goes on, So from now on we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's sins against them, and he has committed to us the message of reconciliation which leads right into the key verse, chapter 5, verse 20. We are, therefore, Christ's ambassadors. And what does it mean to be ambassador? A representation, a leader in the message, the giving of that message into the world. God brings us back to himself. He reconciles us by blotting out our sins and making us righteous. We are no longer God's enemies. We are no longer strangers or foreigners to God. We belong to him, and therefore we trust in Christ. Because we have been reconciled to God, we have the privilege of encouraging others to do the same. And so Paul lays out his authority as an apostle to carry the message of Christ, to give that reconciling message. Um, even though the false teachers were rising up against him. And so uh, he moves on through um, and, and gives some historical movements through here, defending his authority um, and uh, talking about the, the false apostles um, in chapter 11. Uh, Paul asked the Corinthian believers to bear with him as he talked a little foolishness. In other words, Paul felt foolish rehearsing his credentials as a preacher of the gospel, but he thought that he had to do it in order to silence the false teachers. Paul was anxious that the church love, the church's love should be for Christ alone, and he wanted to teach this, that it's all about Christ. It's not about Paul. It's not about individual people. It's about how individual people come together in unity as a group to lift up the truth, the true gospel of Jesus Christ. And so that's where we are right here. Um, in chapter 11, Paul was saying that these marvelous teachers, you'll notice in the Bible Project video, um, they call them super apostles, these marvelous teachers who were not really teaching the truth were no better than he was. He says that they, they may have been more eloquent speakers, but they were speaking lies that were pulling people away and really speaking speaking as servants of Satan instead of uh, servants of the uh, risen Savior of Jesus. Um, and so um, when we get to 2 Corinthians um, chapter 11, Paul begins to, to boast about his sufferings because this really lays out his credentials that he has suffered for Christ. Um, and um, he goes through all of this whole list. I encourage you to read uh, chapter, chapter 11 because he goes through this entire list of what he had been, been through um, as an apostle. Uh, you know, um, the suffering, 
but he was commissioned by God. He acted in holiness. Um, he sp speaks truthfully. Um, he, he had God's Holy Spirit inside of him. Um, he taught the Word of God with integrity, and Christ was always, always at the center of his message. It wasn't about Paul. It was about Christ. He endured persecution as he taught the good news. Um, he led a pure life. He understood the gospel. He displayed patience with the Corinthians. When, when he was really writing these harsh letters, he was still showing patience to them. Um, he was confident that he belonged to Christ and that others could belong to Christ. Um, he even uh, talks about doing miracles among the people, and therefore that should prove his, uh, prove his um, authority. Chapter 12 is another um, important chapter, Paul's vision and the thorn in his side, and where we get this understanding of grace being all-sufficient, all-sufficient grace of God. Um, you know, that, uh, that Christ himself spoke to Paul, because pa Paul writes this, um, to keep me be be from becoming conceited because of these surpassingly great revelations, there was given me a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in your weakness. And, and, and I think that we need to take a look at what that means. Um, that that when, we, when we recognize a weakness inside of ourselves, um, we need to know that Grace is going to cover us. Grace is the sufficiency that brings power to us, even when we might feel small, unworthy, and weak. Um, love that verse. I love also that in, in the NIV, um, because Paul is writing this, saying that Jesus said, spoke this to him. These words are written and read uh, in Second Corinthians 12, verse 9. Um, our weaknesses is lived out by our faith that shows the strength of God. That's where the power comes from, the power within us. God is so good to give us that power, and it all, it's all because of grace. It's all because of grace. Um, Paul, Paul concludes this with some final warnings in chapter 13. Um, uh, when, when Paul arrived the third time to Corinth, um, he was not going to be lenient uh, toward unrepentant sinners. Um, and so he, he confronts um, and he explains exercising uh, church discipline uh, by calling the church leaders out um, and basically telling them that there may be some that need to be excommunicated from the church because they are tearing the, the church apart. And this is a time early in the church's history the church needed to be uh, in unity living out the doctrine, doctrinal grace of Christ. And so uh, these warnings, uh, these play out. And, and um, Paul, Paul writes um, in chapter 13, verse 5, Examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you? Unless, of course, you fail the test. And I trust that you will discover that we have not failed the test. Now we pray to God that you will not do anything wrong. Not that people will see that we have stood the test, but that you will do what is right, even though we may seem to have failed. Now what is Paul saying there, you know? He's trying to uh, get the Corinthians to uh, examine and test themselves to see if they really were Christian really were followers of the way. Um, and, and in order to do that, it's like getting a physical checkup. We need to get a spiritual checkup. We need to check our spiritual selves with the Word of God, the testimony of the Spirit. We do that by praying, conversation with God. We do that by, by letting the Word of God reveal itself in us. That, that's why we do Bible study. That's why we open up the Word of God and we prayerfully read through the Word of God so that we can examine ourselves as to whether or not we are living according to the will of God. I'm going to leave you with that right now, friends. Know that I love you. Know that I'm praying for you. Study well and stay well. Be blessed. See you soon. Bye for now.